This video is going to take a look at the answer functional interface that we can use within our test code. First, we're going to take a look at the problem that it resolves, and this is all around dynamic method stubbing. Then we're going to dive into the functional interface so we can see a little bit more detail on how it works. And then lastly, we're going to have a demonstration on how we can use the answer functional interface in a real life example. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more weekly videos on Java, please subscribe. So if we begin by taking a look at the class that we'll be testing, it's called Book Manager, and it connects to the Books repository, which is instantiated through the constructor. It has two fairly simple methods. One is called get book inventory count, and this will first create a set of strings, which comes from the books repository get books method. And that will simply connect to the database and just return all the books that we have within our inventory, which is a set of strings. And then we return the size of that set from this method. And then we also have just down below the add book method, which accepts a string, which is the new book name. And this will connect to the repository and simply add the book into the database. This would typically be using an insert statement. And then we just return the name of the book from that method from the repository. So we have two fairly simple methods to test, but as we will later see within our tests, we will encounter problems simulating the database behavior when we would like to add a book to the database and having the get book inventory count method to reflect that new addition. So having said that, let's go into our test class and we can try to create a test for this get book inventory count method, which should be fairly simple to implement. So to begin, I'm going to create a spy version of our books repository, and then I'm going to inject that into a version of the books manager. And then to test the get book inventory count method, I'm going to mock the behavior of our books repository to return a set of strings, which would otherwise be the books that we have within our database. And then I'm going to call the get book inventory count method to assert against the number of books that we have stored. So when we call the get books method for our books repository, I'm just going to create a set of strings within our test class that will represent our database. Now that we know our books repository get books method will return this set up here with just the single book, we can now define an integer that will represent the get books inventory count. And then we can finally assert against this value. If I were to add a second book into our repository, we can now expect this test to fail because it would expect a value of two rather than one. So now that we know our test is working as we expect it to. Now the current problem that we face is how we would begin testing the add book method from our book manager. So add book would then be updating the database or in our case, the set of strings to include a new book name. And then if we were to make a subsequent call to the get book inventory count method, we would now expect it to reflect the new set of strings that we receive from our database, and then to also return an increased number of size from that set of strings. In our current test, the books repository get books method will return a, set, a static set of strings that we represent our database with. However, this static database can't be updated within our test unless we manually update that set itself. Instead, what we would like is a dynamic sort of representation of our database that we can update by using the book manager method. And then we can later test that the add books method is working when we make the subsequent call to the get book inventory count after we've added a new book into our set. So this is where the answer functional interface can be really useful as we create a dynamic stubbing of our database to allow us to update it within our tests. So if we take a look at the answer functional interface, we can see that it has just this single method called answer. It accepts an invocation on mock object and it's just called invocation. It throws a throwable and it returns a generic type of T. And we're going to look at how we can use this functional interface with two examples within our test, because first we will need to dynamically update a new set and have a method to return that set every time it's updated. 
and we will also need to have a new answer functional interface to represent adding books into that set and both of these will be defined within our test class. So the first class I'm going to create will represent the getBooks method that will simply return the set of strings. So we have class getBooks and it will implement the answer interface with the generic of an object and we will therefore need to override the method call of answer. And the whole purpose of the getBooks answer interface is that it will return this same set of books that we've defined within our test. Now you may think that this is pretty much identical to what we already have with then return books database set. However, in the books repository, let's say we started filtering out for certain books, uh, we can now provide that logic to the same interface that we have down below. So we could begin providing a bit more logic to how this database set is then going to be processed and returned. We can now update our stub to use this answer interface down below by using then answer and providing a new instance of getBooks. If I run this test it should behave in the exact same way because when we call books repository dot get books it's then going to call this answer functional interface of the get books implementation and that will very simply return books database set which is defined within this test. We can now define a second implementation of our answer functional interface However, this will be used to stub the behavior of adding books into our books database set. The first line within our answer implementation will first have to extract the book that we have within our invocation on mock. So we'll have string book. We will need to cast the answer into a string and this is where we use the invocation because the invocation gives us access to the arguments that are being passed into our stubbed method. And we want to take the very first argument that is passed in, so that would be index zero. And then very simply, we will update our set to now include this new book. Just like the normal implementation, we will return the book back from this method call. In our test method, we now need to stub the books repository dot add books method to now use this add book answer. So whenever we call the add book method from our book manager, it will call the books repository add book. And within our test, it will now use this implementation, which very simply updates the local database set that we have within our test that we can then later assert upon. Now that we have this implementation, I'm, I'm now going to call the books manager spy to add this new book. So when we make this method call, the books repository will now call the add book with the new book name into our set. And as a result, this will use the add book implementation down below to update the local set that we have within our test. And we can finally assert that the new get books count after add is equal to two because this new book should have been added in the local set that we have to our test. So that summarizes this video on how we can use the answer functional interface and to implement it within our own test class on how it enables us to provide dynamic stubbing to represent our application within our test code and as a result, it allows us to combine different method calls and to ensure that they're working in a way that is expected. I would end this video by saying to be very careful when we're creating these implementations of our answers, as they will need to be updated when the application logic begins to change. Say for example, in the get books, if we start filtering, we will need to make sure that the implementation in our answer for getting books does the exact same sort of behavior.